So we're going to have our first question. Let me try and draw this out. Okay, that's fine. So this is A, B, C, and D. Okay. Yes, Uh, uh, uh What questions are we doing right now? We're doing a review for your test. So and the test is today? No, the test is next week. Okay. We're just reviewing today. Um, I will send you all the actual copy of the study guide um, today so you can have it. I was trying to get it ready yesterday. I had some issues, um, but you will have it today. We're going to go through the questions. So you'll see the same questions on your study guide as you're seeing now, and we'll go from there. So in the figure below or in the figure, we're going to say that Uh, AC is parallel. So this is the symbol for parallel. You have two, two parallel lines is parallel to BD. Yes, so that's saying this line here, I'll highlight it. This line and this line are parallel, okay? So, do we, okay, I think that was just me. So suppose that J, K, L, M, oh, no, just kidding. A, B, C, D will be reflected in the X axis and then translated five units up to produce A prime, B prime, C prime, and D prime. Okay, so we don't actually have to do the transformation because it says which statement is true. So my first statement is that segment AB will be parallel to BD. AB will be perpendicular. That's the symbol for perpendicular to BD, AB, oh, I'm sorry, AB will be perpendicular to, I should say A prime, I'm missing the primes. A prime, B prime will be perpendicular to AB. So the original, um, Lot segment AB is going to be perpendicular to the image AB. Okay. Uh, A prime B prime will be perpendicular to B prime D prime or A prime B prime will be parallel to AB. So, which statement do we think is going to be true? A, B, C, or D? Based on the information they gave. So, remember, it said that A, C, and B, D are parallel. Then it's going to do some transformations. And then what's going to be true at the end? So, our G. B. B? B. B. Saying this one? Perfect, yes. Okay, who agrees or disagrees? No, everyone is going to say it's B. Put in the chat what you think it is, because I noticed that when we have to actually say it, you know, if you're still figuring it out, think about it. Remember, in the figure below, segment A. C, oh my gosh, I wrote A, B, oh my goodness. 
Why didn't you guys tell me this? It's supposed to be oh. AC. <laughs> AC is, is parallel to BD. So this line is parallel to this line. And we have all of, can we do a reflection in the X and translate five units up to produce the new image and which statement will be true. Swarji. It, it would be A now. You're changing your answer? Because you changed the... Oh, because I changed. I can't believe you guys didn't tell me that it was supposed to be AC. See, I'll mess up. Yes, it is A. The answer is A. Remember, I'm not doing any changes to the shape. I'm, it's literally, let's say I have, for example, my calculator, right? My calculator, these two lines, sections of my calculator are parallel, right? They'll never touch. So I'm going to reflect it over the X and then I'm gonna translate it five units up. You can't see it, it's a nice background. Point is, my lines still stay parallel. It doesn't matter. I didn't change my shape. I didn't, you know, even if I made it smaller, those lines are parallel no matter what. They will never, ever touch. It doesn't matter if I were to reflect them over the Y and the X and back and forth and make it smaller and all that stuff. If the lines are parallel, they will always be parallel. So the answer was A. <laughs> this is your number one. Any questions on this one? Pretty straightforward, right? Next one. Hopefully I don't mess up on the writing again. So we have here, I don't like that line. I guess that's better. Here. I'd say those are some pretty good looking triangles. I'd say they're pretty even. So I have here triangle A, B, C, and triangle D. E, F. So triangle ABC is rotated clockwise 180 degrees about the origin. to form the new triangle. I'm not gonna write all that. Which statement is true? Angle VAC is congruent to angle X, Z, oh, no, like that, almost messed it up. So, F, no, I'll keep it in order. E, D, F, Angle ACB is congruent to DFE. Angle ABC is congruent to angle I'm not looking for B, DEF. And angle B AC is congruent to angle D, F, E. So which one is true? Remember that when we're naming our angles, we're really looking at the middle 
letter. So when it says triangle BAC, we're talking about angle A, okay? So once again, you guys can put it in the chat. Let me know. Yes, RG. Is it A? Is it which one? A. You saying A? Yes. Oh, so that's where G says A. So I'll wait. You guys can put it in the chat and see how many people have already said that they think it is. A is the question. I want to make it a little bit easier. So in this question, remember, you're matching the middle letter, each angle, with the matching angle over there. This is kind of like what we did yesterday, the congruent parts of congruent shapes are congruent. Yes, Reggie. There are two right answers to this. There are two right answers? Because A also C. Is right for like the angles are the same if A, B, C, and D, E, F. Oh, so I wrote that one wrong. Yeah, that one I wrote wrong. It should be D, F, E. There's only one right answer. It's only one right answer. None of the none of these questions are select all that apply. So we're good on this first test. I did check for that because I know that's one that most people get confused on when it's always a select all that apply. You either check too many or you don't check enough, and it's a horrible mess. But um, so I think we can agree. The correct answer once again is a so b a c and e d f those two are the are the same angle so those are the ones that are congruent okay any questions on this one you guys are not helping me out with these mistakes that i have so i did point it out the other one this time but you got to let me know because I'm writing them out and I'll, I'll get mixed up. All right, we're good. I can move on. Let me move on. The next one. Once again, I have to draw another graph. Your test has a lot of graphs. Makes sense, right? We did a lot of graphing. We did a lot of transformations. It's mostly transformations and properties of them. So it's not. That's why I said it's not a difficult test. So we have line segment. <coughs> a, B. So line segment A, B is reflected across <coughs> the X axis to form line segment C, D. So I take my a, B here, and it's reflected. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. To make line C, D. Is that the correct transformation? <laughs> Is it? No, I mislabeled it again. Guess C comes before D, so C would take where A is. So C goes down here and D goes over there. It doesn't really matter, I guess, but I like to have it that way. I like to have it organized. So 
to form line segment CD. Then line segment CD is rotated 90 degrees counterclockwise. Uh, about the origin. So that means it's gonna go, I'm not gonna do it exactly because it doesn't have to be exact. We're just gonna kind of guesstimate it. Somewhere about there, right? If I rotate it counter 90 degrees to form line segment EF. Okay. <coughs> Select the statement that is true about the transformation. So A is line segment CD is longer than I'm, I'm going to write the AB <laughs> short because otherwise it'll take me forever to write all these options. So EF is longer than CD. EF is shorter than AB and EF is the same length as AB. Which one? Let me know. Put it in the chat. B. Margie, I'm sure is going to tell me. What is it? D. B? D. Oh, D. D. You guys have to enunciate a little bit for me. I'm old. I can't hear very well. So Swarjeet says D. Put it in the chat. This one's pretty easy. I told you this test isn't bad, right? It's not bad at all. All right, so I think most of us have all answered and the correct answer is D, right? I didn't do a dilation. I didn't do anything crazy. All I did was move that line segment around. I reflected it. I rotated it. All of those are called what? What's the special name for those kinds of transformations? Rigid. Rigid motion. They are rigid motions. I didn't change any of my size. So there's no way one is going to be shorter and one is going to be longer. They're going to be the same length no matter what. All right, if you spell it wrong, don't worry. It's not an English class. I won't dock you for spelling things wrong. <laughs> so number four. All right, once again, in case you didn't guess, more shapes. Okay. Oh no, that's why that one came out so bad. All right. Yeah, sure, this is close enough. All right, they're supposed to be all the same shape. Okay, this is number one. This is number two and number three. So which transformation, so, okay, wait. 
Marcy transformed figure one to obtain figure two. Then she transformed figure two to obtain figure three. Okay, wait, I'm gonna redo that one. And I'm gonna put it somewhere else. I'm going to do it this way. Yes, I should be. Yeah, I think that's how it would be. All right. What transformations can be the ones Marcy used? So now you guys, I'm not going to write any options this time because I kind of went off the books on this one. <laughs> So you're going to tell me what transformations to go from one to two, and then from two to three. So put those in the chat. So you can just write, um, you know, slide, then this, and then this. Slide reflection across this axis, or whatever. Yes, OG. You reflect one. No, we don't say it out loud. Put it in the chat. Put it in the chat. Oh. That way I can right. see. It's no fun if you give the answer and then everyone's like, oh yeah, that, that looks about right. That seems right. I know what happens. So how do you go from one to two and then two to three? Gabby got it right. So I'll wait a few minutes. I figured that's what you meant, Isabella, and you were right. Uh, Martina, you were right too. Sienna's right. So I didn't give the options for this one because I realized if I'm giving you the options, I might be making this too simple. This question is going to look different on your study guide because I just kind of made it up on my own. So it'll have different transformations, but it's the same uh, idea. You're basically still going to say from one to two to three and trying to figure out. So Curtis right as well. So most of us seem to get it correct. The first one is a reflection. So to go from figure one to two, it's a reflection over the Y. And then from two to three, it's a little hard to see in the drawing. And I, I apologize for that. It's a not a good shape to use, but it is a rotation. You guys still understood what I was trying to do. A rotation of 180 degrees. So those were your two. By the way, in this, this one, I wrote is rotated clockwise 180 degrees. Does that matter which direction I rotate it clockwise or counterclockwise? No, it's useless information, right? 180 is always going to be in the opposite side of wherever it is. It doesn't matter if it's clockwise or counterclockwise, okay? So we got number four. Pretty good, pretty good. The next one. Okay, so this one there is no drawing, says Lyle graphs triangle ABC on coordinate axes. He performs two transformations on this figure that result in the congruent triangle. So ABC is congruent to triangle DEF. 
what series of transformations did Lyle most likely use? So once again, I'm not gonna give you the options. What I want you guys to do is tell me in the chat, tell me what possible transformations Lyle, or in Lyle in this case, used. You don't have to be exact. I don't care if it was, you know, you're being so specific. You can just tell me, oh, dilation, reflection, rotation, or whatever. Just list the options that are possible, okay? So Curtis and Gabby are right. See, now, how does Shamari want grade for participation when I see him standing around in the background? <laughs> He's not paying attention. I've seen him walk around the room. Wait, so we list the possible transformations. Yeah, so you don't have to be specific. You can just say, you know, like I said, we, we had the four, right? Dilation, rotation, translation, and oh my gosh, what's the last one? Rotation, did I say that one? Rotation, reflection. reflection. I don't remember which ones I said. We had the four main ones, right? So just list the ones that are possible. Oh, so that's what he, he says he's plugging in his computer. I've been watching him walk around in the back. All right, so most of us got it. It is, and I think it was Martina who said it, any rigid motion transformation. Yes, it was Martina. Any rigid motion transformation is what's gonna happen, right? So as long as you see rotation, translation, and reflection, That's all the, the transformations they could have done, right? To get two congruent triangles, that's what needs to happen. I didn't give the options because the question itself has the four options and three of them all include dilation. So if, if, if you were trying to figure it out and we knew the rigid motions, which I clearly we do, it's a bit obvious, which was the right answer, okay? So anything, remember, congruent means it's exactly the same in every way. So you can't change the size. You can't do a dilation. It has to only be a rigid transformation. So the correct answer shows a rotation and a reflection. Okay, so any rigid motion, it could have been a translation and a reflection and whatever, whatever, whatever. Point is, they're congruent. There's no change in the size, no dilation at all. Okay, this was number, what, five. See, we're already almost halfway through this, this study guide, this test. This is number six. That's the halfway point. There's only 12 questions. This one does have a graph, though. So I do have to draw this. So I have triangle, and then I have another triangle. This is A, and this is B, okay? Now, which transformations are applied to figure A to get to figure B? So once again, this is another one where it doesn't really matter about numbers or anything, anything specific. It's just saying, how did I get from A to B? So again, put it in the chat. I'm not gonna give options. I wanna see that we know these things, which we've been pretty good. So I, I think we're good. Take note of where B ends up in relation to A. So 
So Maya and Gabby are both right. Marla's right. Edward's right. See, I like this because it shows me that if I were to give you a test and eliminate all the multiple choice answers, we know what we're doing, right? You wouldn't really need the multiple choice. As long as I told you, you know, keep it very general and everything, we, we seem to know what's going on, which is awesome. Awesome, awesome. Okay, so first thing we're gonna look at is, wait, this clearly is a slide somewhere. There's clearly a slide because all the transformations that we've been doing, all the transformations we know, we never end up on the axis unless the original one is on the axis, right? If it cuts through there, it usually happens in the pre-image as well, but that's not the case here. Remember, A is my pre-image. Then B is my image. Okay. So the first thing I want to note is that if my B was higher up, it would be a reflection, right? They would be a mirror opposite, okay? So my first thing is a reflection across the Y. Can't spell today. Across the Y axis. Okay. Then, all right, if I did that, my it really should have been about here. Wait, I need my, my fancy tool. So I can get a nice looking triangle. It will be somewhere around. That's not okay. Yeah, something like that, right? That would be my reflection across the Y. It would be somewhere around there. But I end up over here. So what ends up happening is it would be then a slide to the right, I have to move to the right first, and then down, okay? Um, doesn't really say that, or maybe it's my drawing that I did it too far, but the point is it's a reflection and a translation, right? If I were to have done a rotation, let's say if I went it would have been 180 degrees. If I wanted to end up in this quadrant, I would have had to do 180 degrees. That would have looked something like this or the opposite way. Off the top of my head without giving points, it's a little weird, but it would be the complete opposite of what A looks like right there. So it's not a rotation. So the point is to notice that it's a reflection and then a slide, okay? In my case, in my beautiful drawing, it's a rotate slide to the right and then down, but doesn't really matter. My main point is that it's a reflection and a translation. Those are the two things that matter. Those are the two things I care about, okay? Questions on this one? No, we're good. Look, we only have four minutes left. We're on question eight. No, seven. That was six. We're on seven. It's because seven doesn't have a graph. It throws me off. So number seven, 
Krisha drew a pentagon A on a coordinate grid. So we have a grid. We can draw a pentagon. It would probably be terrible. And it came out as a circle. No, I'm not making a pentagon. Something's going wrong. I can't seem to draw this shape right now. There we go. That's what I was looking for. <clears throat> so Pentagon A on a coordinate grid. She then performed a rotation followed by a dilation with scale factor five to produce Pentagon, Pentagon B, okay? Oh, doesn't say where she rotated it. It doesn't say any points. So I don't really know anything about Pentagon B. All I know is that it's smaller or performed a rotation and then dilation by scale factor five to produce Pentagon B, which true is true about the two pentagons. So this one I'll give you the options for. So A, they are congruent. B, they are not congruent or similar. They are similar but not congruent or they are congruent oh no they are similar and congruent What do I think? Put it in the chat. Put it in the chat, Sergi. <laughs> so what are we comparing shape A to? So we're comparing shape A to, to shape B, which was a rotation and a dilation by five. So I don't know exactly where that shape goes. But I know that to get from A to B, I have to do those two transformations. All right, Swarjeet, what was your answer? Since you don't like to use the chat. Um, they are congruent. A. Saying A. A. The correct answer is C. C. So I don't think we really talked about similar but I know that congruent means they're the exact same thing. So if I know that congruent means they're the exact same thing, it means that if I did a dilation, it's not congruent. Now I just need to figure out if they're similar. Well, they're the same shape. They're just, it's just gonna be bigger or smaller depending on the dilation. This one is a scale factor of five, so it should be bigger. But it's, it's the idea that if there's a dilation involved, congruency is out. There's no congruency, but they can still, they are still similar, okay? So we'll stop there for today. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and
pull up the 